Um, today we're going to talk a little bit about social media. But before I go into that, let's discuss, just to put things into perspective, really where did all of this nonsense begin? Was it the social media tools and all of this noise online that created our need to feel like we need to uh, be connected all the time? Or uh, was it just our need and then the tools wrapped around it? I'd like to say that basically everything we do online can revert back to junior high or high school. I'm not sure how many of you had a cell phone in high school. I certainly didn't. But if you remember Saved by the Bell, Zach Morris did. I actually had a pager, so I missed out quite a bit. But why did, why did high school kids or junior high kids, why do they have cell phones now? Why did we have these back then? And it's very simple. We, we just didn't want to miss out. We didn't want to miss out on the party and what was happening. Inevitably, if we chose not to go out that night or we weren't connected by our friends, it was the most epic night ever, and we had to hear about it the next day at school. So for me, like I said, I was stuck with a pager. Moral of the story, upgrade your means of communication and you won't miss out on the party. Um, and that's kind of what we're going to be going over today. But today it's different, right? We have the world in our hands. We can get access to anything and everything at any given moment. You can know everything about your niche. You can report all of the news and information to your clients. You can bump into referral partners online. I mean, things should really be much easier today to not have to worry about missing out on what's happening in the world. So the problem with that is this. It's still just as confusing, right? primarily because we're busy just managing our business. We're paying attention to our business. And the web, the web seems to be more along the lines of uh, just more noise. So at the end of the day, we, we end up missing out. And all of these social media tools and, and Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn and what, what every social media manager or coach or whomever tells you you need to be on, you need to be connected to, they end up being more of a distraction than anything. So our game plan today is very simple. I use very few social media tools, and I manage everything that I do online through these free tools. Um, I'm going to show you how to never feel like you're going to miss out on an opportunity again, and to be part of the connection, and really to save a lot of time. But for me, the time isn't so I can hang out with my business referral partners and my clients. It's so that I can enjoy my family and really enjoy life. So real quick, my story, I became an originator in 99 in Las Vegas, and all of my business was based on referrals. I was really good at getting real estate agents to send me business. I went to every closing, and I had great relationships. But the, uh, the market shifted in early 2007, and literally within a few months, all of those real estate agents just completely disappeared, except for one. I had one real estate agent, him and I had been building websites since 2004, and it was primarily me giving him money and doing a little bit of uh, playing with the web. But he was the last one standing. In 2007, my only agent was because of a website we had created. So at that moment, I decided, wow, A, I just wasted a lot of time building relationships because they didn't mean anything when the world collapsed. But B, I liked this new web thing. Maybe I should pay closer attention to it. I had no choice. It was out of survival. So since 2007, I have been full-time on the web. And we actually took that, that one agent, built a real estate company, uh, fueled that company, and now there's 30 real estate agents. Yep. What was that? Yeah, Eric, you talking? Nope, I didn't say anything. It sounded like some background noise. Let me uh, try and see if I can clean some of that up for you. Why don't you keep on going with the presentation? Okay, sorry. I thought you were talking. Man. All callers are muted. Just mute everybody on me, Eric. So I could be on mute. I could not be on mute. Oh, I was on mute that time. <laughs> Funny how the okay. technology work out. 
Uh, so yeah, everybody's been. Uh, put, we put the microphones on mute that way we don't have any distracting background noise and and stuff in the background. So you're welcome to keep right on rolling. Okay, cool. Well, that was actually the end of my presentation. I'm just kidding. Um, okay, so what we did is we turned that real estate, that little real estate uh, website, into a company. And there's 30 real estate agents working there now, and all of their business comes from the web. And uh, since then, I've built several thousand websites. Right now, I work, like I said, with Eric said, with a company called Best Rate Referrals, and I just manage all the organic and online stuff. Um, but over the past five, six years since I've actually been teaching other mortgage and real estate professionals how to do this, regardless of where they are at in their um, online evolution or education, the number one question I get is, where do I start? Okay, great. There's tools to use. There's power out there. We can generate leads. We can build relationships. But where do I start? What's the most important thing? So that's what we're going to go over today. And these few things that we go over today and the systems that I use, uh, if you just focus on implementing these in 2013, you master these few uh, strategies, you'll really be further ahead in the game than most of the real estate mortgage people in your, system, in your town. Um, but more importantly, you'll have a sense of purpose and you'll gain a lot of confidence. So let's start with the absolute hardest thing to do with regards to the web, whether you're experienced or not. The first, and it's, it's, it isn't, it's, it's the least fun part of the entire process, but it's to create the message. It's that about me page, the about us page. It's writing your bio. Very few people have a good bio, and it's hard to write about yourself. So here's what I do when writing a bio. Um, what you want to do is give the exact talking points, the exact words and phrases that you want somebody else to use, a real estate agent, past client, or whomever, you want those guys to use when introducing you. So we talked um, at the NAM conference yesterday, and Eric led a great full day panel about building your value proposition. So what is your value proposition or your unique selling um, point that you want people to be using you for versus somebody else. Low rates or great communication. I mean, the bar has been set really low. So what I do here is pick a niche, and then you're going to talk about that niche. And if you keep in mind that we're writing the bullet points for somebody else to use, it makes it much easier. So here's how you write those down. And I'll get to where we're going to publish these on the web in a second. But with regards to your online profile, you're going to have a short profile and a long one. Short meaning basically one sentence. Long can be as long as you want. But here are the bullet points that you need to hit. Where are you? For example, Mark Madsen is a Las Vegas mortgage professional. What are you? The Las Vegas mortgage professional. And who do you help? So this would be your niche. Are you first time home buyer? Are you government? A jumbo? A senior reverse? Why do you do it? And, and this can be because you're passionate, you can tell your longer story, or it can be something very simple. But a because in there, an explanation of why you help this particular niche audience is important because it connects with people right away. And then the last point is, how can I trust you? And this number five point is what we're going to use the web to build that trust. So as an example of a quick um, bio, let's Let's say Mark Madsen is a Las Vegas mortgage professional. He specializes in home renovation 203K loans. He loves turning ugly houses into beautiful homes. You can check him out online on his Facebook page. He publishes great before and after photos. His Twitter stream, he talks about recent news and changes within the 203K of the home loan world. And his YouTube channel, he talks about, or he features uh, great videos of past clients. So we use those social media channels to reinforce the talking points. And those talking points were Mark is a great 203K loan officer, as an example. So before we go dive onto the web and start publishing this content, sharing content, building our profiles, I just want to make one point. A uh, social media marketing is very similar to cold calling if you don't have a game plan. I mean, activity will probably produce some results, but it's not going to pencil out uh, at the end of the month with a good ROI if you value your time. 
an argument. People say, well, hey, I, I spend a lot of time on Facebook and I get referrals from old friends. Okay, it's, it's highly possible, but it's not a social media marketing campaign. It's just a side benefit of being around and being part of the action in, in some places or another. Okay, so at the end of this, we're going to send out a PDF with all of these tools, a couple of steps, and some links to everything. So you can write some notes. I'll definitely call out some important uh, things to pay attention to. But we'll have all of the links and everything else you need to worry about later on so you don't have to uh, get overwhelmed with that. Here are the tools that I use and that I feel are very important, and I'll explain why. And after this, I'm going to do a, a few live demos and walk you through how I use these tools, what they look like, so you can get the full picture of it. Um, I use Google+, and that's basically where you publish your full bio. Uh, there are significant search engine optimization advantages to using Google+, and I could do a full day seminar on why it's important. I'll just tell you that I'm using it and my job is to generate thousands of leads, so it's important for me to use. Google really likes Google Plus, obviously, and it's their answer to Facebook and Twitter. So this is where you're going to put your profile, your bio, and links to the other places where you participate on the web, which would be including Twitter, LinkedIn, your Facebook fan pages. And hopefully you can graduate to just sharing content to actually producing content, which would be through your YouTube channel or a WordPress blog, something like that. Google Reader is a game changer. I've been using Google Reader uh, five years, five years now. And this is where I organize everything, every bit of noise, everything that I want to research. I can stalk real estate agents on Google Reader. I can stalk anything in any niche. If I'm going to write, um, if I'm going to launch a new website and I need to write 30 or 40 pages of content, I'll organize anything that's happening within that niche within Google Reader. And within about two weeks, I pretty much have, have a, I've, I've got a, a really solid foundation for what I need to write about. Google Alerts works with Google Reader. And then I use a social media managing tool called Hootsuite. There are a few out there. There's actually a couple that have come on the market within the past six months that might be a little bit more robust. But I'm going to stick with Hootsuite. And this is where I manage my Twitter, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, anything, any social networking account. You can literally manage through Hootsuite your conversations, the content that's going out. You can schedule your content as it goes out all of the conversations and every time you're mentioned. And Hootsuite has a really good mobile app. So I try to hide the web from myself as much as possible. Otherwise, I'll, uh, I'll just get lost. Three, four hours later, I forget where I started and why I started. Hootsuite is one of those tools that allows me to get in and out of social networks without actually uh, doing much, participating much. But I am able to leave a big footprint. And I like Twitter. I like Twitter primarily because it's only 140 characters. You don't have to be people's friends per se. It's just a constant stream of news. And you can choose the news or the people that are publishing that news through Twitter and organize them. And it saves time. Again, most of my activities on the web revolve around how can I save as much time and get the most bang for my buck. One thing with Twitter is you're not going to find that you'll get leads directly. This isn't a lead generation strategy on Twitter. For Twitter, I use it mainly to listen and to connect with influencers. For example, local journalists, national journalists. Every journalist is on Twitter. They love Twitter. And if these guys are writing about you and publishing articles in the newspaper and quoting you, indirectly you're going to get business out of that. Uh, all of the local real estate associations are on Twitter. They have a communication manager or a social media manager, and they're doing their best to find conversations or just push content out. So you can follow those guys on Twitter locally and connect with them there. And uh, there's a few other places, but I would say that Twitter is important for you to pay attention to, at least um, have in your toolbox, but don't spend too much time on it. Google Plus is the number one. And then I put down here underneath that optional, Facebook and LinkedIn. Um, you can build relationships on either of these places. 
Uh, I do most of my lead gen through Google+, very little through Facebook, and I actually canceled my LinkedIn account three years ago. So this is just how I set up my systems. You guys can do with that as you choose. So now that we have the tools, which I'll show you in a second, and we've already established our bio, which is basically the talking points that you want other people to use when introducing you, we need to go and put that content in places where the buyers are. Your buyers could be your buyers, buyers, or they can be your real estate agents, but you want to go out there and find active places on the web. So when you're thinking, okay, well, where do I do, where, I, where am I going to go today? What type of uh, content am I going to you know, talk about? If you can just find out, well, where are the buyers? And the buyers can be on a high traffic conversation that's happening around a, a local uh, a newspaper article about HARP. Or maybe you'll find that a lot of real estate agents are commenting on or sharing or commenting on a particular article that was published by Realtor.org's magazine, one of their blogs. So find out where the action is. So let's dive in to the live demo. So here's the, and I'm, I'm moving fast so we can go through this live demo, and then I'll have uh, questions and answers right afterwards. How are we doing on time, Eric? We're doing great, Mark. Um, in fact, I was kind of surprised you skipped over the, the Chris Farley slide. You had a really funny point on that one, but maybe we can get back to what that was all about in a minute. Uh, no, but you're doing awesome. I, I had Chris Farley's slide up there. Did it? Did the did the system not pick it up? Is there a three second delay and I'm moving no, too no, fast? No. Okay. You've got some great funny stories, so feel free to share those. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll move through these uh, live demos and then we'll go back to those. So here's the daily roundup. We have Google+, which is the center of your universe. And then we have Google Reader, which we're going to browse articles. We're going to share them through Google+. We're going to click on through and schedule anything that we think is relevant to building our talking points and building that, that level of trust and authority. We're going to comment on high traffic conversations. We're going to share any of these articles or anything that we like on social networks. And we're going to look for opportunities to mention somebody. Today we're simply going to talk about content curation, not content creation. So two big differences with regards to the web. Both have the same purpose. It's to develop trust and authority. If you are writing articles on industry publications or if you have your own blog, and you are publishing weekly or daily content about your niche, obviously people are going to see that and deem you more trustworthy than somebody else in your industry who is not doing that yet says they are also an expert within your niche. And the authority part comes in a couple of different ways. If a lot of people on the web mention you, share your articles, um, like it, Google Plus it, tweet it, however, you gain authority in the eyes of the search engines, in the eyes of Google, because they say, hey, a lot of people are talking about this guy who happens to know something about 203K, for example. Um, I think we trust this guy as well. We'll go ahead and push his websites up to the top. Now, by connecting your website through your Google Plus profile, which I'll show you in a second, it will also help your search engine rankings. But that's how it works with authority in the web and search. Now, just authority in your market and your industry within your peers or other real estate agents, if you happen to have the best content or talk about this stuff the most, you'll be top of mind. They'll think about you with regards to your niche, and that's authority in itself as well. So I'm going to dive in really fast and show you a Google Plus profile. And very few people are using Google Plus. Um, compared to Facebook, obviously. There isn't this worldwide adoption of Google+. Plus. But the reason I like it is because it's a very simple place to put a profile, connect to all of your online activities, and it does help you in the search engines. My goal for 2013 is to really trick out my Google Plus profile and uh, really expand on this. So it's always changing. Um, I have a bio. I have my introduction right here in my bio. You can put some employment in whatever you've done. I'm going to scroll down here to the bottom and I'm going to show you why I like Google Plus the best. These are places you contribute to. 
once you do start producing content, and out of most mortgage and real estate uh, professionals, maybe 5 to 10% of them are blogging or writing on industry publications or producing any content whatsoever. But those 5 to 10% have a significant advantage in the search engines, and that's how you generate leads is by getting found when somebody is online asking Google a very specific question about a, a topic that you might be able to articulate. And if you're there when they're asking, uh, generally you get first crack at the business. So as an example, if you were to do a search for, let's see, um, uh, Las Vegas 203K loan, not 203 bucks in. I've connected my one of my websites, my 203K website, to my Google Plus profile. And as a result, in the search engine rankings, as you can see this uh, top ranking right, right here, there's my photo from my Google Plus. Now I have my family. It would probably be better to put a professional photo. I like my family photo better. But there's a significant, uh, significantly higher click-through ratio when you have a photo listed next to it. It looks like a news story. I also have these other two rankings underneath it, but if you're looking at this, regardless if this is number one or not, of these three sites, most people would click on this one because it has a photo. So there's the benefit that you can see right away by having a Google Plus profile, and all I did was connect the two. Let's dive into Google Reader, and then we'll come back for questions on all of these. So like I said, Google Reader is where I hold all of my information, um, I manage everything, I have zero anxiety about missing out on anything that's happening within my niche or a niche or the industry because I can get it all right here. So what I do is I organize all of my news and feeds in folders on the left hand side. So if today I wanted to look at HARP for example, here's everything that is being said or talked about or published on HARP. And I have a series of HARP websites, so I really have to stay in the loop on this. Now, one of the benefits with Google Reader is that you can read, and in most instances they'll publish the entire article within Google Reader, but if not, you at least get the title and the summary, so you can find out everything and everybody that's talking about it. People that are on Zillow or Trulia or Yahoo Answers asking questions in the forum, that content will pop up here as well and boom, you can dive right in and start answering questions. But let's talk about sharing one or, one or two of these articles for the sake of building on those, those, that value proposition. If you say that you are a HARP 2.0 expert, well, then you need to talk about HARP 2.0 publicly. You need to share some relevant things so that people can trust. Well, how do I know you're a HARP expert? Well, because I've immersed myself in it. Again, my Twitter stream is all about HARP, or my YouTube stream, or wherever you're pushing content out, or very simply my Google Plus profile, and on my posts talks about HARP. That way people can see that you really are a market expert. I click on through, I can look at the article. Housing wire takes a while to load. Now I have two options that I can do once I've found a good article. First option is to share it just through Google Reader. Here's that Google Plus. I click on Google Plus. I can add a comment. I can add uh, certain names of people or I can just hit share and have it uh, go publicly to my wall. The good news with Google Plus is that you can, uh, you can just you can target certain lists. You drop people into a circle and you can only share certain information with certain types of people. So it's easy to organize that way. I'm just going to share this and it'll hit everybody on my wall. I like this about Harp. The second thing to do here is if I'm reading this article and I feel that I have something intelligent to say about it, I can leave a comment right here. Participate in the discussion a little bit. Instead of just sharing the article to whomever your target audience may be, real estate agents or clients, if you participate in the conversation, maybe at a little bit higher level, answering a question, calling them out on something, 
whoever the journalist may be, maybe they had a different, uh, maybe they said something right or something wrong. But if you participate in this conversation more than just sharing it, people say, hey, okay, so he really does know some, something about that. What I like to do though, I'm just going to share it. And through Hootsuite, which I'll dive into in a second, I have this little browser, browser tool. And I'm going to click on that. I'm going to select a profile, my Twitter profile. This is the message, or I can change my message. And I'm going to hit Send Now. But let's say I wanted to fire through 20 articles. You can schedule this. And I can schedule these out. And I could share on anywhere that I'm connected to through Hootsuite all of my articles. And I can schedule them out for the day. So technically, let's see, what is the date? We'll do one tomorrow at you know, 10 a.m. My daily roundup generally turns into a weekly roundup. I'll go through and pick 30 or 40 articles, and I'll just share them. But I'll schedule them out for, for the entire week. So it looks as though I'm participating on any of these social networks, but I'm really not. I may have spent 10 minutes that day. Maybe I spent an hour. just depends. Maybe if I leave a couple of comments, obviously it's going to take a little bit longer because I have to, um, I have to know something. I have to think about it. But I love connecting Google Reader with Hootsuite because you can fire out a lot of content, know everything that's happening, and not really have to turn your, your computer on all the time. There's one component with Google Reader that I like to uh, talk about really fast and connect it, and it's called Google Alerts. So with Google Alerts, it's just a, a service. Anytime something or somebody or any word or keywords are mentioned on Google, you can sign up to have those Google, those, those, uh, those feeds, those links emailed to you. You should do it with your name. Uh, I chose not to do it with my name because somebody, a, a basketball player is named after me. So I don't want to get flooded. But, so I have a Google alert for HARP 3.0. So anywhere HARP 3.0, that phrase is mentioned on Google, I get a notification. I subscribe to a lot of Google alerts. Google generally will send them to your email. Well, I don't want to blow up my email account, plus I want this stuff organized. So you also have option two, send it to your Google Reader account. So I've got all of these Google Alerts hitting my, my, uh, my mortgage harp folder. Let's see, real estate in Las Vegas. Here's my real estate in Las Vegas. So anything that's being talked about with real estate in Las Vegas, any real estate agent, any real estate agent that has a blog, local news, local newspapers, all through here. So if I'm stalking local real estate agents and trying to find out who is active today or who's been active this week, if they had anything intelligent to say on their blogs, maybe I can click on through, share their blog through Twitter or Facebook or on my Google+, Plus. maybe leave a good comment, maybe call them out on Twitter when I do that. But it allows me to find these opportunities here versus running out and looking for them. I think I've beat that up enough. Let's take a look at Hootsuite. And here's just a quick example of how you can organize keyword searches from Twitter. I just chose Twitter here. You can do the same thing through Google+, Facebook. But I, I log in and take a look, and I want to see on, on Twitter today who's talking about this search phrase, Las Vegas real estate. I also have Harp Refinance, SEO for search, and then just general mortgage. And I'll open this up maybe once a day, maybe once a week, and just find out who's saying what. Look for opportunities to connect. Look for opportunities to retweet. Um, who's talking about their own blogs, their own uh, other stuff. And inevitably, there are consumers on here saying something like, hey, I need a mortgage, or hey, my real estate agent, I don't like them. I need a new real estate agent. But I'm here looking at stuff versus on Twitter, Facebook, and everywhere else searching for something that I don't even know where to search for. It's all right here. It saves, my time. It saves me a lot of time. And then through Hootsuite, this is where you can schedule those, those articles to go out. I would definitely recommend spending a little time learning about Hootsuite and the tools and the power that it has for you, as well as Google+. And I'm going to roll into my last example here. 
of another tool that you can use for uh, basically finding out who people are, what they are, where they're contributing to right now simply from your email. So Eric sent this over to me. And this little tool, this little Gmail plugin called Reportive, and I have a slide up about this. And in the right-hand side, it replaces all of those Google ads with the person. It just grabs their email and their name and pulls in all of their information. So if he is active on Facebook right now, I can see his most recent uh, published or post to Facebook. If he says something on LinkedIn, on Google+, on any of these things, so right before you're getting ready to send an email to a real estate agent or even a new lead, if somebody you know, filled out a form on, on, online and you're typing in their email address, it'll pull up all of their information right here. And it's just powerful. It, you, you may not realize that it's somebody's birthday today. Or you may not realize that they just had a baby. Or they're moving. Or they may have said on Facebook, I'm shopping mortgage lenders today. Or the real estate agent said, I hate my mortgage lender. I need a new one. But you're just getting ready to send them an email and now you can see what they're saying. That's a really quick run through of that process. And here's an example of that reportive. So I'm probably uh, going to have a lot of questions. Eric, do you, do you see anything coming through right now that I can address right away? Yeah, definitely. I want to go ahead and hit some questions that have been already. See, we posted. ran through that fast, been, so yeah. You guys have been doing a great job, um, you know, interacting. That's what I love about you know doing these webinars is, is there's always an opportunity to learn how to make them better. And uh, you know, one of the things we've been working on the last couple of weeks with the chat is going ahead and making sure. By the way, uh, can everybody see the chat? Is everybody's chat window open um, on your screen? Are you are you all seeing that? Um, okay, so um, there's also, by the way, if you don't necessarily want to call out or if you want to ask a question, you're not so you feel like I mean, of course there are no dumb questions. The only dumb question is one you don't ask. But uh, if you are a little embarrassed, you got a question that might be a little sensitive. You don't want the whole world knowing about it. Uh, you are welcome to use the private chat feature as we move through these, this part of the conversation. Uh, Mark, one of the first questions that came up uh, is it asked the question. Uh, Charles asked the question. Um, what do you mean noise? Or, I'm sorry, actually Michael asked this question. When you, earlier you were talking about internet noise. What do you mean by that? Every, there's an unfiltered stream of content coming through the web every day. Every day we log into Facebook or Twitter or wherever we're at and everybody's talking about other stuff. Some of it's accurate, some of it's not. And if we try to pay attention to it versus looking at what we have to do today, it becomes just a giant stream of noise. So I would say anything that you are not intentionally looking to get would be considered noise. And consumers, our target audience, our real estate agents, are affected by noise probably more than us. Uh, real estate agents, for sure, hear a different pitch of how they should use the web or different different uh, tools and strategies that so they're talking with us about it. I get real estate agents asking me probably weekly, well, hey, I heard about this new way of generating leads online. Is this something I should take, take a look at? Um, and consumers, I've heard a lot about HARP3. When can I start doing that? Well, not quite yet. So noise. Right. Now, and keep in mind that, that a big part of that question comes down to efficiency and productivity. I mean, the practical reality is, is one of the reasons I asked Mark to come onto this call is I see an awful lot of clients spending an awful lot of time on Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn and posting things all over the place. And it can become very distracting because you go on Facebook and you start to create a status update. Um, or at least this was my experience anyway, when I would go in to create a status update, there would be five other notifications that would pop up in like three minutes and there was no way that I could keep up with that. I'd just find myself sitting there staring at Facebook all day not getting any loans done. And at the end of the day, you know, we're here to market, we're here to develop the social connection. As Mark has shared with you all, we're here to, to build your presence and your credibility online by using efficient tools and resources. So what, what, uh, what's so powerful about what Mark has shared with you all today 
is that you have the opportunity to have a huge impact online without it taking hundreds of thousands of hours of your time where you then can't do any originations or help any borrowers with structuring their deals. Okay, uh, let's keep on going. Uh, the next question was, um, Sean asked a question, with your 203K loan example, did you buy the placement? Mark, or did you rise to the top of the Google search ranks, um, generally pop, uh, generating popularity through natural hits? Uh, naturally. So that is organic search. There's a difference. There's paid. You can buy the placement, uh, pay-per-click, and then there's organic. So I built that site a year ago. I am in about 500 cities on 203K, and I rank probably in all of those cities for uh, you know city 203k related searches and a lot of content, a lot of internal links, developing that authority, not only through social media mentions but also through uh, being mentioned on other strong sites. Um, my primary job is generating organic leads, and when I say organic, it's sh just like that showing up in the, in the search engines when somebody's asking Google a question. And uh, I love the 203K program. I think it's, it's, it's something our economy needs, certainly something that the Las Vegas real estate market needs. Uh, most real estate professionals are not just, they're just not confident in that program. Most mortgage people right now are busy closing refinances, so they're not paying attention to that program. But, yep, all organic SEO. All right. And I'm happy to do a completely so, uh, separate conversation on that too, uh, on how to get found in the search engines. Um, Eric, it's you know, at a later date. Well, we'd love to have you back. I know you've got a ton of knowledge and ideas, and you, well, I mean, your numbers are proven. I mean, generating 6,000 consumer websites and leads is just, I mean, you've got some impressive results that you've been able to generate. Um, okay, so another question that came up through the private chat um, is, is, what do I put on my Facebook wall versus my business Facebook page? How do you balance between the social and the business and how to keep the two, I don't know, by, uh, working together effectively? Sure. A, a, a common question, too. Look at your Facebook fan page, or I'm sorry, your Facebook profile as just you hanging out. So I would put stuff on there that you would talk about when you're actually hanging out with these people, high school reunion, at a bar, or whatever. If you're constantly updating your Facebook profile with news about the industry, people may or may not choose to filter you out. Uh, your Facebook fan page would be dedicated to your niche, your business, and that's where I would definitely publish stuff there. Um, one thing you can do, though, with your Facebook personal profile is, again, instead of just pushing content out, leaving a link, hey, here's more information about mortgage raise today, go and find a, a high level or a high traffic conversation, either through your Google Reader by monitoring the market or just by what people are talking about on Facebook, and say something on that, uh, on that, on that link. Because your comments will also show up in your Facebook profile. So it will still show up on your wall that you're participating in a conversation, but now you're not acting as though you're spamming your friends and family members with more mortgage rate info, but instead you're actually just participating in a conversation. And we used to do that when we would be sitting at a bar. We'd talk really loud about how low rates are, and we'd go to a bar where there was some sort of real estate meetup. So we'd be talking about the mortgage program around real estate agents and just between mortgage friends so that the guys around us could, could hear and hopefully answer questions. Um, same thing on Facebook. You can just find those types of conversations and participate in versus worrying about pushing content out constantly. Well, unless of course you're, you know, a, you know, an obnoxious idiot like me, and you love really what you do, and that's all you talk about with everybody, and people get tired of it, <laughs> they yell at you for it. I mean, that is what I no, talk I, about. What I, no, I, it's it's no, whatever you want to do. Uh, it's whatever you want to do. Okay, so that's kind of the the focus, though. Is the business page really should be the business stuff? The fan page uh, should be the fun stuff, uh, the personal page. And, and I think that's a great way of looking at it: is balancing. If that's who you stuff. are, if that's who you are, if you're always engaged and always about what you do, people also have the choice to just not listen to you, right? So if you happen to have a lot of 
connections on Facebook or any of these social networks, and you are talking about your business all the time, and you've got good feedback, then if, you know, if, that works, if, it, if it works, then keep it working. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so I think we've got time for just basically one more question. Um, there was one that was really a good, a little bit different focus than some of the other questions that have come through. And, and you guys, by the way, if you've posted questions, continue to post your questions here because there's no way we could probably cover all the questions you have. But this is one of your best ways to communicate with Mark and I and the rest of the coaching team. Put your questions into the chat for us. We will follow up with you and see, to get, see that you get those answers that you're looking for. So uh, like I said, the only dumb question is the one you don't ask. There's, uh, you know, and so we want to be here to support you and help you get the information you need to take advantage of these powerful tools to help you grow your business and to help you make a bigger difference in the community and the environment you work in. Uh, the last question that I want to focus on is just a real quick response, Mark. If, if, you know, if you've got somebody who's brand new, they just created their Facebook page for the first time, what is the, the first couple of steps that you would tell them to take to expand and grow how they're impacting and how they're reaching online? Let's, maybe we can keep the response kind of tight and short here. Okay, pick that niche, choose a niche. Don't just say I do all mortgages and refis for everybody. Choose that niche, and if you're brand new, um, it's easier to, to market yourself if you've got that niche. And create a fan page around that niche. And then, and then read everything you possibly can through Google Reader. Subscribe to everything, to everybody else's blog, all the Google alerts, and start finding valuable information to publish on that, on that Facebook fan page. People are not going to follow that Facebook fan page because they're really interested in your stuff. Initially, you're going to get business because somebody's going to look at it to make sure you know your stuff. So publish articles on the Facebook fan page and comments and anything else that will give people the initial first impression that you really know what you're talking about. And these are the types of conversations that you're paying, paying attention to. And it's that first impression. It's, it's building that trust and authority. And that's how I would use that Facebook fan page is just to highlight your knowledge over something that your buyer or your real estate agent doesn't have. Awesome, awesome. Well, guys, thank you for a wonderful conversation. Just a couple of things that I wanted to share with everybody to make sure we're moving in the right direction. Um, we are uh, not having a party. All and so um, bear with me two seconds. I'm going to jump around just a little bit and try and make sure that we get to everything we need. Uh, there are a couple of quick tips, and we've got some exciting new news coming up, um, so I'm going to jump through a couple of things with you. Uh, for those of you who uh, would like more of what, uh, uh, what Mark has shared with us today, Mark, you had a couple of things that you were going to introduce uh, as far as a follow-up and doing some other additional um, answer to Q&A type stuff. Um, go ahead and take just a minute, if you would, and kind of share with the folks what, to, what were some of the things that you would uh, offer them to be able to connect with you a little bit deeper and, and to be able to find out more about getting some additional support with uh, you helping them build their social networking marketing plan. Um, I will put out a basically a one-page or two-page white paper today that we can email everybody with links, strategies, breaking down everything with some of those questions. And I believe, Eric, you were giving away some, some coaching or I was going to volunteer for some coaching for some whoever listened in. Yeah, you uh, had mentioned something about being willing to share some of your time uh, answering some direct questions about uh, the social media folks. Uh, but we also can work with the coaches to help filter some of that. Um, what we're going to do is what we normally do to introduce people to the idea of coaching is we offer what we call a strategy session. Um, it's, a, it's an easy way for you to get an understanding of what the true value of coaching is by spending a little bit of time with the coach and getting some direct guidance on how to take steps forward with the ideas that Mark has shared with you today. And whether it's, uh, I don't, Mark, I don't know if you how much time you have to be able to connect with people um, in a direct support role, or the coaching team can filter ideas through Mark. Mark is a very valuable resource to us on the back side of things as well. We go to him frequently with questions about how to help clients, um, and, and Mark has been a huge asset to me. Uh, he and I are working on a couple of projects behind the scenes as well that I think we're going to be able to get some information out to you in the not too distant future. Um, so anyway, if you're interested in getting a, a, a strategy session, you'll get a one-hour intensive strategy focused on you and finding solutions to what you need 
with your uh, getting your campaign plan, uh, your your social media marketing plan up and running. Uh, the coaches will be able to provide that. Of course, you know, for committing one hour of time, to walk away with some solid action plans uh, that you can use to implement and and uh, make a difference in what you're trying to accomplish through your online and profile marketing. Uh, Beyond that, uh, we do have some tools that Mark is going to be sharing with you. You will receive a, a follow-up email with a link to the recording of today's webinar, as well as uh, the, the free gift that Mark mentioned to you with, with bullet points and tips about where to get some of these resources uh, that Mark has shown you today. Um, in addition to that, uh, you know, take the time to uh, you know to put the plan in action. You know. At the end of the day, uh, ideas are, are only valuable if they are implemented. And, uh, and the best thing that you can do is pick the one first thing you need to do. So, uh, you know, as, as, as you guys have begun to hear me say, I'm not recognizing a lot of familiar names on the list of registrants and people hanging on for today. Um, you know, you rarely see me. Um, do these programs without actually getting to the point where I ask you to take some action. And the action that I ask you to take usually is that we want to get you to being able to uh, do something with the ideas that you have today. I just realized we have a little bit of a sync problem right now um, with the slides. <laughs> you got the slides you guys are watching are not the slides I'm talking about, so maybe this will help you make a difference. Uh, by the way, uh, with the strategy session, if you would like to receive one of those strategy sessions, the easiest way to do it is simply hop to this website, mxlcoach.com slash strategy. There's, a, uh, there's a, a request form on there. Just let us know in the comment section. Um, the best way to get a hold of you to actually schedule that with one of the coaches, and we'll get that rolling for you. Um, all right, so the final piece of this is, like I said, put this in play. Do something with the ideas and strategies that you've heard today. Decide what is the most important thing that you need to do with the, what you heard from Mark today. From there, you want to decide what action do you need to take specifically. So, so let's say uh, your first action item is you need to set up your Google Alerts and Google Reader account. Okay. So what's the very first action item? Well, you've got to find where it is on the website. So you've got to follow, uh, you know, you've got to wait for the email to, to see Mark's talking points about how to get in and set up your Google Alerts and your Google Reader accounts. Once you have those set up, then you've got to schedule time. So the second thing is decide what action you need to take to make this happen for you in your daily business. Third is decide when you want to have that implemented. And the bonus here would be find somebody to hold you accountable. You know, we all know how easy it is to break a promise to ourselves. It's a lot more difficult to break a promise to somebody else. We call it the running buddy effect. Imagine that you were uh, you decided you want to lose some weight. Maybe you all of you, as we gear up towards New Year's resolutions here in the next couple of weeks, maybe it's decided that you want to go jogging three times a week to lose some weight. Well, you get up January 4th and it's nasty cold outside, and you know it's your second day running, and you're sore because you ran more than you should have the first day. So you just roll back over and go back to sleep. How much easier would it be, though, if you had, uh, you know, bumped into a friend or a neighbor at a holiday party, and and you had told them about your your goal of going out and jogging three days a week to lose some weight, and they said, you know, that sounds like a great idea. Why don't we go run together? So you wake up January fourth. It's cold. It's nasty. You're tired. You ran farther than you probably should have January second and third. But your buddy's going to be on your doorstep at 5:30 in the morning to take you jogging. So you get up anyway. So take that extra step of create the action plan that you want to implement, set a target deadline for when you'd like to see it implemented, and then ask somebody to hold you accountable. Literally ask somebody, hey, I'm really working on getting my social media profile set up and getting more active. I've committed that I'm going to set up my Google Reader account, and, and would you please help hold me accountable to that? Call me next week, Tuesday, and bug me about whether I've done it or not. Is that okay? Now, that accountability partner is somebody that should be somebody you highly trust and respect, somebody that, um, you know, that you're going to feel bad if you don't follow through on that commitment. Maybe it's a business partner. Maybe it's a colleague. Maybe it's a manager. If you don't have an accountability partner, a coach can certainly be a great accountability partner for you. But pick somebody. 
to make that next layer happen, make a promise to somebody else. All right, uh, last thing I wanted to share with you all upcoming next week, Coach Brad Korn is going to be sharing with us on how to use holiday downtime to reconnect with clients. Um, he'll be talking a little bit about some of the just basic, simple conversation strategies and approaches that you can use uh, during this time of year to be able to really make a significant reconnect with your past client database and how to get those ideas going to the next level. So I want to thank our presenter one last time. Uh, Mr. Mark, you shared some wonderful information with the group today, and we definitely will have you back on this series in the future to go deeper on some of the more tactical, specific stuff. Um, you and I are definitely going to need to work out uh, you know, how to get you know, this information packaged for our group, and, and we're going to be talking about that. Uh, I think early next week we're supposed to connect again, aren't we? We'll get that schedule behind the scenes. Anyway, uh, guys, I want, to, uh, want you to give a big thank you to Mr. Madsen for joining us today and sharing some wonderful information, and then I'll let you wrap up, Mark, with any final thoughts, advice, guidance. That was great, Eric. I appreciate the time today. I think we went over quite a bit. I'll send out a li uh, link uh, or a list of everything that they need to do, and and hopefully, um, you know, everybody can make 2013 a great year. Awesome, awesome. Well, guys, like I said, uh, we'll leave the action. We'll leave the uh, chat line open here for uh, just a, a couple more minutes after the hour as we get started. Um, Mark, thank you again for joining us. I know you've got to get on to some other projects, but. Uh, you know, thank you for, for donating some of your valuable time here to join us for today's program. Um, like I said, I'm going to have to hop off here relatively quickly today, guys. I've got to get to the airport and get on the plane uh, to get back home and, and see my family that I've been away from for a week and a half. Um, so uh, I'm not going to be able to hang out too much longer, but please, if you have any additional questions for Mark or the coaches, go ahead and take a few seconds here to post them in the chat. Uh, I'm going to be signing off here um, in just a couple of seconds, though, but I'm going to leave the chat window open for a couple of minutes so that you guys have the opportunity to post any of your questions, and I will make sure